again. It's a red stick. So what's going on everyone, welcome back to YK Recreation. I should have done this a few months ago, but as you know, we've been having troubles with water leaks, boost leaks, exhaust leaks, you name it. So what we're doing today is we're actually checking to see how much antifreeze content we've got in the actual car. Because just because it looks red, doesn't mean it's full of antifreeze or the antifreeze is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Because what can happen is over time, antifreeze has a lifespan of two years, I'm thinking. You're supposed to change the coolant every two years. So let's have a look now and see how much actual antifreeze content it's got in the water and how strong that is. So yeah, let's head over to this red one first. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is remove the cap. Make sure it's not warm, cause trust me, otherwise your, your face is gonna be burnt and full of steam. What cap has this even got? It's got a HKS pursuing the ultimate engine performance and efficiency. Performance, I'll agree with efficiency. No, I mean, I, don't, I think you're just having us on there. You're never going to get efficiency with performance, so yeah, forget all that. And let's pop it open, see what it looks like in there. See, look, it does look red, so you'd think, oh, yeah, it's got loads of antifreeze in this. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to check it, but we've got an actual tester. Antifreeze tester used for testing ethylene glycol. So that's probably what's inside the antifreeze. We bought this from Machine Mart for what? £8.39? Including VAT. They're all these robbers in the VAT, don't they? Um, so, yeah, how this works is the number of floating discs shows degree of protection. So, it's pretty simple. I'll just show you now how it works. If the red, blue and white float, we should have up to minus 23 degrees Celsius protection. So that's what we're aiming for. I'm a bit intrigued, to be fair, to see how much protection this has got. But hey ho, let it fill up. Oh my, I can see some gunk in there. We'll let the air out and then hold it in. Oh my. You're not gonna believe it. We have. Is the red? We just. Only the red one's floating. Only the. Well, kind of, but it's not. Oh my god, yeah, we're in trouble. So we've only got. Minus seven. Less because the blue one's floating slightly. Let's just say my. Minus eight protection. So yeah, this antifreeze really needs a flush. It is in dire need of a flush. So do you know what? Let's give it a flush. I don't really want to risk driving it around. And plus, because it's winners coming, you don't want to crack the actual engine. Because in some cases, the, action, the engine, when it freezes over, can actually crack. And for the sake of water and a bit of antifreeze, it's not worth the risk. So. so there you have it. I was a bit shocked with the results. I thought I'd have at least still up to minus 15 degrees protection. But as you see, sometimes these little uh, checks can save you an engine. So do you know what, I'm not even gonna waste no time, I'm gonna quickly head over and just remove all the old coolant and put fresh coolant in. You, come on, you can join me, let's go. Let's remove this coolant. To remove the coolant, it's got a little thing that you twist out on the radiator. It's like a screw cap to release the water. Uh. Oh. Oh, so look, it does look like good clean antifreeze, isn't it? Because it's red, seen it? Yeah. Like if someone's seen this, they'll be like, oh, this is really clean antifreeze, man. Look how, look how clean it is. It's red. Car's bleeding. Oh, oh, the car's bleeding, bro. The car's bleeding. Yeah, so this is what comes out of the radiator, this little plastic piece. You've got to be careful because sometimes these get brittle and then they pop off. Has it got the washer? Where's the wa Oh, that's the washer. Look, it's just lifted up slightly. It's this rubber piece here. A big one. 
Yeah, it's a really big thick washer tank. Okay, so now that all the coolant's drained out, what we'll do is we'll add some more water in there to give it a flush. So let's turn this hose pipe on. Let's turn it on. Let's see if we get this any more water up. So let's look underneath. Oh yeah, it's flooding. It's flooding. It's flooding. Oh, too much. Too water's too coming much. too fast. Water's coming out too fast. Let's slow it down. Yeah, it's gone all right. Is it going to Oh, too yeah. much again. Yeah, yeah, a bit less. A bit less, about there. Yeah, that's right. Right, come on, let's come under here. Come under here. See what what the water's like under here. See, look, it looks still pretty clean, doesn't it? Hmm. So we're gonna run this through till all this water comes out nice and clear. So while that's draining out, I just thought I'd let you know antifreeze is a bit corrosive. So if you do have sensitive skin, you shouldn't be doing this type of work because it is corrosive. If you do get in your hands, I've just washed it off with soap and water. Just so you don't want it to itch later on, so yeah. Just thought I'd let you know. So what I'm also gonna do is to actually get the water through the whole engine system i'm actually gonna fire this up start it up and let the water that's in the matrix the water that's well i don't think it'll open the it won't get actually so it might get into some bits of the engine but obviously because the thermostat's closed because the engine's cold it won't go fully around the engine but firing it up will help get the muck out so if you hold this here i'm gonna fire the car up idea look now more dirty water's coming out don't know if you can hear me but look at the water color now now that we've started it up it's gone from red to bloody rust color so this is why it's good to sometimes give them a fire up so it gets rid of all the dirty water but what i'm also going to do is put more uh turn the top water up slightly to get a bit more pressure through Because now it's turning, the water pump's turning, it'll be able to suck more water through. Don't worry about the car overheating because you're only doing it for a few minutes. Just to make sure all the coolant does get out. All the dirty coolant, look, you can see it now, you know, with the car firing up. Look, it's gone a bit frothy. See, look, it's clearing up now. If you, if you, if you are a bit scared, thinking that the, it might overheat, just come and check the water temperature. If you don't have gold, you just look inside there and just make sure it's not overheating but my, my temperatures are fine but I've had it on for a few minutes now so I'm just literally just going to turn it off Let's have a look at the colour on the water now Yeah, a lot cleaner But yeah, this has been a success It's been nice and clean Now comes the hard bit Pretty Filling good. it up Okay, so the water's drained out It's time to put this plastic plug back in just thought I'll show you, look how much rust is stuck on the end of the actual plug. So imagine how much rust and corrosion would be inside your engine if you don't keep up with your antifreeze. Let's plug this back in. There's still a little bit of water leaking out, but that's no biggie one. Radiator screw is back on now. You want to be careful, you don't want to over tighten it, because don't forget it's only plastic. So now that's done. The red colour one. You don't really want to mix colours. If, you, if, you've, if you've got red in it previously, try putting red in it. Some people run blue on the freeze, but you try not to mix them because there is some sort of difference in them. And what you want to do is see how much litres of coolant your actual car takes. From what I've seen online, it takes 7 litres. So I've got 3 litres of antifreeze here and I'm going to put 4 litres of water in it. You want a 50-50 mix. So what I'm going to go ahead now and do is put some antifreeze in it first. Put all this antifreeze in it, we've only got 3 litres left. Chuck all the antifreeze in it, and then put some water in it. Careful. You don't want to get an airlock. Just let it, let it drink it. What I do is, yeah, if you come to 
you and you think, oh, it's full, it's full. No, it's not really full. It's just messing with your head. It's got air bubbles in it. So what I do is, yeah, you know, the actual water pipe here. I just squeeze this. And if you look over there, look. Show me that. So when I squeeze this, yeah. It's letting the air bubbles out. And then you'll see it in a minute. Watch it start drinking the water. Can't squeeze this pipe much because it's got that um, temperature sensor on it inside the car. See if I can squeeze the bottom one. No, because I've got that in the cooler pipe there. But uh, on standard versions, it's literally pretty easy to get to when you're trying to squeeze them. But, so I'm going to squeeze that water pipe from underneath here. Let's see if that sucks the water. <laughs> Gonna, it's gonna take a little while guys airlocks always take a good little while to release it's you're gonna have to fire it up then it's a little bit watch watch it This is the overflow, so when it runs out of water from there, it just sucks it from here. But we're gonna have to get this cleaned out one day. But yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna have to wait now uh, to make sure all the air's out. One way to make sure to check if all the air's out is check the inside radiators when they start getting warm. That means air's gone through the matrix system. And then just make sure your thermostat's open. So when your car's up to temperature, you want to make sure that both pipes are warm. If both pipes are warm, that means you've got full circulation. Then you can put the cap back on and then you're done. So we're just going to do that now. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to the end of this video and recheck the antifreeze and see how many bits you've got floating so stay tuned and also check that you've got no water leaking underneath here that oh, looks good What I do is, you know, when I'm just to make sure that it is full, that uh, the thermostat's open, I come and touch this bottom uh, water pipe and I fell it and it is warm. So that means the thermostat's open now. So we're just going to get rid of the last little bits of uh, bubbles that's left in the system. So the car is up to temperature. Nice warm air coming out of there. Ooh, lovely, nice and toasty. So let's do the check now. See how much antifreeze we've got in there. Let's see how many antifreeze we've got in there. So you can't do this when it's warm, it says. Oh. I don't really want to touch it. I know that's boiling warm water. Just got to be careful. Put your finger at the end. And now we have three floats floating. So now we have up to minus 23 protection. And I'm happy with that. It's not going to get more than minus 23 in bloody United Kingdom. If it was in Canada, so I'd be a bit worried, you know what I mean? Or Switzerland, you know, lovely roads in Switzerland. Man. I can't wait to go hit them roads in Switzerland. But yeah, for now, we have protection for the UK winter. And the only problem is, we've got another Subaru to do this stuff. Uh, the water is in that other Subaru because that other Subaru has been stood for about three and a half years So it'd be, it'd be nice to see what sort of protection or how long antifreeze does exactly last because By the looks of it nobody's changed that antifreeze 
And if you all, and also if you want to watch more videos on this Red Subaru, I've got a playlist of maintenance. Not even we haven't even had major issues with this. It's just maintenance on this Red Subaru. So go ahead over and check that as well. We'll have some more videos coming up soon. Hopefully we can get this red one out of here and back to the blue ones episodes. So yeah, make sure you like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.